today. It's the 7th of January, February, March, April, May, 7th of May, and welcome to the shop vlog. Uh, if you're new to the Cigar Box Guitar Builder channel, please click like and subscribe. And if you like the little bell, put the bell if you want to get notifications. Uh, shop talk out of the way, that's all done. A um, couple of things I'm working on today. This one here. This is the Schimmel Panic guitar. So just roughing it out. So that's actually going to look quite nice. That's the inside of the box. We've got some support corners in there. I also tend to put a little glue. I do a run of glue across on those side, on these seams here. Now there are nails in there. Um, these boxes, these timber boxes are held together with rusty nails as well. So I always find that a, a run of glue along here just still keeps it light. It's not an acoustic guitar, that's not. but uh, there is something to be said for like a drum sound, isn't there? You know. uh, the top of this is timber as well. Quite often you'll find this is these are MDF. Um, I think this is actually that's timber as well. Um, you can see how I've put in. Let's take this out. It's not glued in yet. You can see how I've put in. A notch here. Uh, I'm one of the believers that I I like the whole neck. You can hear Prince barking in the background. I like the whole neck to touch the top of the box, so that I just get that resonance all the way through. When it's time, I'll put two screws in to lock it down into place here and here. But I'll show you that later. This is all sanded uh, to 240 grit. And you can see there's little inclusions in here, and I quite like that. So once I get the dust out of that and I get the um, the oil on there, that's actually going to come up really, really nicely. And I like showing those off. So this will be a fretted guitar. Anyway, that's that. So that's the Schimmel Panic um, guitar. Uh, I will be working on the orders, last of the orders as well, over the weekend. Um, when I get a chance, and I wanted to introduce you to the Matt Sherman. Uh, if you wanted to see a neglected instrument, this is it. Um, this is a diddly bow that I built probably six years ago, which has been just hanging up in my shop. If you've ever seen some of the old videos and things where I was doing some videos against a brick wall, um, this was one of the guitars that was hanging in the background. You can see the string tensions kind of pulled the neck up a bit. Not the greatest sound of the world. Um, so what I'm going to do, I was just thinking, I wonder if I can actually resurrect this diddly bow. So I'll take you on, um, whether I just post pictures on the group, um, I don't know, but it's pretty nasty. I don't, there are definitely things living in this box. Um, there was a, a, a wasp nest in this box at one stage. I'm hoping while I'm holding it that there isn't one in there now. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Nice box. My brother actually bought, <laughs> I feel a bit guilty about this. Damien, if you're watching, uh, I do feel a little bit guilty about this. This is one of the boxes that Damien brought back for me from the United States when he went on a visit. I think he was in New York City and he actually went into the Nat Sherman shop in New York and he brought this back for me and I built it and I have neglected it ever since so I apologize most profusely however I promise I will bring it back uh, I will bring it back to some form of diddly bow glory uh, so that's yeah let's see what happens with it you know I'll take some photos along the way and we'll see if we can strengthen it up this was built as I said, maybe five, maybe six years ago. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens with it. I don't want to hit it too much because I might piss something off that's living in there. Anyway, see you shortly.
cleaning up as I go. Okay. Screwdriver. I will try and reuse all of these parts. Even the maybe even the rusty ones. I don't want to get rid of. Um, I don't want to get rid of all of the. If you want to use the word patina, that's on there. Uh, all right, here we go. Now this this is a slider, which are inherently difficult to use for cigar box guitars. All right, there was a spider living in there. There he is. I think one of the wasps that was in there must have got him. Probably, uh, we'll get, take these screws out. Maybe this big lamp is a bit of overkill, I don't know. I quite like it though. Oh, oh, there you go. Let's rip that out. Broken it out. Yep, and that broke out too. All right. I think this... Uh, what do you reckon? Hit it with a w, bit of WD-40 and see if we can actually reuse it. I mean, I've got 300 of them over in a, in a box or something like that, but um, we could. All right, well, why don't we give it a spray with some WD-40 and um, I mean, that's a plastic, that's a plastic tuner. see. Right, I'm going to pull, let's twist this over. Right. That's a bit dead. That was in the days when I was using um, hot glue. Uh, you can't use hot glue in Australia. Now, I've mentioned this before, but um, Last time I used hot glue was in 2015 when I went to a festival uh, where it was 46 degrees outside the tent and it got over 50 degrees Celsius. This is Celsius, not Fahrenheit, in the tent and all the hot glue and all of my guitars melted. And I said from that day forward, I will never use hot glue ever again. And I never did. So, this suit, this is just a piece of oak. See if we can give it a bit of a clean up. So probably the most important thing on this rebuild, obviously is going to be the box. There's some pieces of timber missing from the box. Um, what I may end up doing is reinforcing it, not trying to hide it, but reinforce it on the inside with another piece, or maybe even some ply, um, so maybe three ply or something like that, three or five ply. And this timber's actually got a really pretty little tiger stripe in it. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's here, but I think it'll come up really nicely once I pop a little bit of oil on it. But, and it, I'm not even sure if I oiled the neck before, but this is just a piece of dowel that I would have bought at Bunnings. And as I said, I, I'm not going to take it back 
I'm not going to get rid of all of that, all of the muck on there. I'll keep some of it on there. And I'll use a reverse tuner so I can keep those. Give it a clean up. Got that nice shading there, make it a little brighter in the corners. We'll flip it around. Do the same. I do have a sanding block. I probably use that Oz. I don't want to take off all of the, well basically I don't want to take off all of the dirt. I'm not selling this, this is going to be for me. And I'll, um, I may end up even popping a, um, an electric electric pickup on it. I've got those, um, some of those crazy um, gold foil sizes, or, or actually sound hole, those crazy sound hole pickups from um, Aldi. They come out with every now and again, and they're good fun. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's lovely, that's come up a treat. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So that's survived. All right. Now this, I'm not going to sand. You can see how, however, see how there's a, it's turned up through the pressure. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to fix this. This is MDF. This isn't actually, um, this isn't actually ply. This is actually MDF with laminate over the top. Um, and it, it, it's, it's funny, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of the, the most beautiful boxes that you see, a lot of the most beautiful boxes that you see are actually MDF. Go and check out um, uh, Cigar Box. No, um, Ben Giddy Baker, CB Giddy's YouTube channel. Um, I think it's Cigar Box Nation. Um, there was a video that came out about maybe four or five years ago um, where Ben and I think it might have been Nick or it might have been, no, it might have been Glenn uh, when Glenn was still with them. Um, they did a, a, a video of the different types of materials that cigar boxes were actually made out of and it was really surprising to see some of the most beautiful boxes that are highly, highly sought after um, weren't actually made out of uh, plywood or timber. They were actually made out of MDF. Very interesting. Um, which I will say, maybe I, I think is personally, I think is a, is a would be an inferior material. Hey, let's. Let's save the wires. I'm not going to keep this. Is, these are the old um, cheapy eBay, not the wire, the old cheapy eBay um, Apple Jacks that I used to get. Um, really crappy. They just, yeah, they just, they, they bend out of shape and they. They're no good, so chuck it out. Um, these are much better, much, much, much stronger. Um, I'm actually thinking about selling parts, guys. Some parts, uh, electronic parts, uh, pots, pickups, uh, piezo pickup sets, and things like that. So I might end up doing some of that on my website. Not because, it's not the money thing, because you don't make a lot of money out of doing this, but it's, it's fun. So I might actually end up doing some um, 
some really nice good quality harnesses but that's the thought that's for later on but they're good get good quality output jacks for your guitars yeah you'll thank yourself honestly um yes so I'm just getting some of the dust again I, I I'm not I don't think I'm actually gonna wash it I don't think I'm actually gonna wash this um, because I might want to keep some of that dirt on there just for look but you can see I've got some chipping happening here some breakage coming off there um, on the inside I will get, get get the dust out because I'm going to glue in um, some support I've got some of Mark Wilmot's um, flat pickups still too so but I don't know if um, I mean they're really really quite lovely pickups but I'm not sure whether I want to use um, they're not cheap cheap put it that way so um, I'm not sure if I actually want to invest money in this um, let's let's get some glue into here oh, my glue's stuck shut Put your caps on the glue overnight, guys. Yeah. Kids in the background playing. It's a Saturday morning here. It's the weekend. And I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I'm so close, man. So close to not worrying about orders anymore. <laughs> so close. Just want to get these last three done. Just want to get these last three done. And then that's it. Oh. That will be it for sure. Right, let's get a bit of tape on that, baby. Hold that closed. cleaning down here today, maybe. There we go. So that, that might be that. So what I'm gonna do, you can see that there's a, there's a lip. There's actually a lip on this one here. I'm actually gonna sand that off so that it can actually sit. I don't. I won't have to slide it in, I'm just gonna sit it down. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do right now. So what I've noticed with this is that because of the fact it's been out, out in the weather, pretty much, it's bowed there and there. So now that I've taken the, the lip off there to sit, um, it's actually, there's a little gap there, which I don't particularly mind because I'll be able to, um, just use that as an extra sound hole so let more of the sound actually come out. So that's all right. So what I'm going to do is cut a couple of support struts, which are going to sit along the side of the box. I'm not going to have to worry about, I'm not going to fix this. I'm going to leave this the way it is. But I will put in some support struts here using some scrap timber. I'll do that next. All right, so I've cut a couple of pieces of uh, oak, some scrap, and I'm going to measure and cut on my miter saw. One. Oh. Pop that on the other side. Do the other side. I never throw these away, these bits, bits, bits of timber away. I always find them really, really useful. And there. And there. Now I'm gonna cut them on the miter saw so I've got some nice square uh, cuts. All right, so this is where we're up to. 
So I've cut out some support struts. You'll see this one's away from the corner because that's where the output jack's going to be. So I'll just put that one there. When this all gets glued together, it ain't going to go anywhere. So that's that. I'm actually also considering maybe just doing it completely um, acoustic. I don't know. We'll see how we go. Um, I don't think there's a strong enough footing for a piezo. Um, we'll see what happens. These, this, I put, I was building. I built this in the days when quite often I would actually put on three string guitars, I'd actually put a piezo on the top of the lid. And I, I um, personally, I, I think that's, um, it doesn't work. It's not very good to do it there. Um, if you disagree with me, pop it in the comments, that's okay. Uh, remember, my, um, my opinions are just my opinions. the right and all the wrong it all depends on you for me at the moment they're right okay so that's going to sit on and get glued on when the time is right um, I'm going to pop that uh, strainer so strainer back on uh, and today I will apply uh, a couple of coats of, um, I might put shellac on it, but I don't want to do a French polish. Uh, so I still want to keep that kind of slightly left out in the, uh, left out in the weather kind of feel about it. Um, so I might actually end up using some, um, well, my favourite thing at the moment really is a uh, is a linseed oil. Um, so I may end up coating it in linseed oil. The only issue I have with linseed oil is I, I don't like, uh, I, I'm not a fan of the smell of it. So it does tend to have a funny, uh, for me, uh, a kind of a funny, um, what's the word? Uh, sesame seedy kind of smell. Or seedy smell, I suppose. You know, so like you know when you kind of it's a thing. What do you do? All right, okay. So that's that. We'll come back to this uh, a little bit later. Uh, I'll give this a spray with some WD forty and see if I can clean it up because at the moment it's actually seized. So uh, it's one of those things where I've got to. Oh, it's not quite seized actually. It is working so. Um, it's a question of whether or not I'm going to invest time in fixing this um, or whether I'll just simply use another one. So I have got some WD-40. I'll go and have a look for it. Okay. All right. We'll talk to you soon.